Greetings, Marcus Melnick from FireArmMentor.com. After posting my last video, one of our subscribers, viewers, suggested that I discuss what the right behavior is at the range. How, do you're supposed to, how are you supposed to act? Well, uh, I have a list of things. I wrote it down so it would be somewhat organized, so I'm going to be glancing off the screen. And it's going to sound like a little random, but they all kind of come together like a symphony. And as long as you follow these rules, these are generalized, not specific to any one particular range. They vary a little bit. First rule I'm going to talk about is shoot at authorized targets only. And typically that means paper targets. I refrain from hanging a flag that may look like a Green Bay Packers flag or a flag of another country. Uh, the trouble is it's not paper, it's you, they're usually nylon. And when they're nylon, um, the, the risk of melting and fire is higher. So that's why they only want you to shoot at authorized targets. Also, never, ever, ever print a picture of a real person, particularly a political figure, and take it to the range. When you put that down range, you know, political figure, Name your political figure. I'm not going to get into politics. And there's, say, a Secret Service agent who happens to be off duty but likes to shoot. And you have just basically made yourself a uh, an offender with a, a credible threat towards that elected official. So do not do that. Um, some ranges will sell cartoon, cartoony-looking Osama bin Laden's, Kim Jong-un's, Kim Jong-il's, you know, that's an authorized target. But once you print an actual photo of someone, you are basically threatening them, at least in the eyes of law enforcement. And that's extreme case. There might be, a, you know, a law enforcement officer there who thinks it's funny and you don't get in trouble, uh, but manage your risks. Next, if you happen to damage anything on the range, you shoot down the cable system, you screw something up, report it. Are you liable for it? Yes. But the trouble is there's a lot of people that will damage the range, not report it, leave, and then the range is not usable, or at least that booth is not usable. Typically, I've seen range officers appreciate when you report damage. Okay, next, know the rules on holster draw and rapid fire or rate of fire. So a lot of ranges do not allow you to do holster draw unless supervised by an instructor. Some ranges will have a holster draw night. You show them that you can do it safely and then they'll just they'll let you go. Uh, I actually have been doing private lessons, private one-on-one -on -one lessons with holster draw. The range that I go to because I'm an insured and bonded instructor allows me to do that and I have a relationship with them. So I started to do uh, practicing with holster draw. I also recommend a, a product, laserstrikesystems.com, where you can practice holster draw at home with a uh, reflective target. There's another video on it where we played horse, quite a bit played pig, but it's the basketball game applied to uh, firearms. So I highly recommend them, laserstrikesystems.com. If you use my last name, Melnick, M-E-L-N-I-C-K, you will get 10% off. Okay, rate of fire. A lot of ranges do not allow you to rapid fire. Bang, 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 bang. A lot of them will say, look, pause for about a second in between each shot. Bang, pause, bang, pause. Uh, I have been shooting for 42 years, and if I do rapid fire, bang, 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 the, the first shot hits, the second shot might hit, but the, the gun is so all over the place, at least with the handgun. With a, with a, uh, a long gun, I'm a, I'm a lot better. Okay, next. Uh, stay The guns stay in the booth. You're shooting with a buddy. Your buddy wants to have your gun and shoot it. Great, you can share it. But what you're supposed to do is leave the gun in the booth have the shooter go into that booth or make sure the gun is in a case when you move it from booth to booth. That is a safety uh, procedure. Please, please do not walk around carrying guns in your hand. In Illinois, don't walk around open carrying either at a range. You'll see range employees who have a firearm 
you know, handgun typically on their hip and, and they're carrying open. They have permission from the owner to carry while they are working. Okay, uh, we talked about rate of fire. Let's talk about allowed ammunition. A lot of ranges do not allow steel cased ammo. So you might say to yourself, well, who cares? The case is steel. When the case is steel, typically the projectile is also has a steel element uh, and it wears down the back straps, uh, I'm sorry, the back stops of the ranges rapidly. So the ranges have to replace them on a more often basis. They're extremely expensive. So a lot of ranges say only use brass case, no steel tip. Uh, if you're shooting an AR-15, no green tip because that has a steel uh, cylinder inside, making it a little bit heavier. It's a 62 grain bullet instead of a 55 grain bullet. Okay, uh, it is okay to ask other shooters for help, but I caution you, wait until they're done shooting, or at least until they're out of ammunition in their current, um, say, round of shooting. You don't wanna be tapping on someone's shoulder in the middle of while they're shooting. A, they're concentrating. It's kind of like golf a little bit. You don't want to distract them and definitely don't want to distract them if they have a loaded gun because what they could do is they could say, oh yeah, hey, what's up? And then all of a sudden the gun's pointing at you and I've seen this. It's happened to me. So I've we know a lot because we've seen a lot. Bump, ba -dum, bump, 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 bump. It's from a commercial. I thought it was kind of funny. Okay, next, cell phones. Do not, this is a Marcus rule. Do not have your cell phone in one hand and a gun in the other hand. It is just too distracting. If you want someone to take a video of you to post on YouTube, show your friends to Snapchat it, no problem. Have someone else hold the cell phone. Have someone else take the video, take the picture. Cannot have a cell phone in one hand and a gun in another. It is just a recipe for disaster. You will find that some range safety officers are not so nice. And the reason why they're not so nice is because they deal with shooters who either or are ignorant of the rules, which is the reason why I'm doing this video to make educate everyone and make them not ignorant, or they are simply careless. For example, someone will come in with an AR-15 pistol with no sights on it. It's very difficult to accurately shoot a gun without sights where it comes, the front sight is an A-post sight and they never purchase the rear sight. They think they can shoot it. They are ignorant of the correct way to fire a gun. These RSOs deal with, um, I'll call them knuckleheads often. And so they don't, their assumption is you're a knucklehead when you come in the door, unless you can prove to them that, uh, you know, you're not. So some of them are a little cranky because they have to do repairs. No one reported them. There's damage, there's dangerous activities, um, and they that's all they see, that they deal with negative things all the time. Respect the range safety officer. Don't be ignorant, don't be careless when you are handling your firearms. Their job is safety. So if they come on the range and they're yelling at a shooter, it's because the shooter did something wrong. I've seen tons of Yelp reviews. Oh, this range officer is a jerk. It's usually a little bit more harsh than that but they are trying to protect everyone. And if there's one knucklehead who's violating the rules and putting other people in danger, they will get ejected from the range. And it's usually not a fun time when that happens. Okay, uh, another thing, we talked about paying attention, no cell phone in one hand, no gun in the other. The other thing I've seen is underneath ear cup um, hearing protection, I have seen people with earbuds they're listening to music while they're shooting. It's a great idea, except it's not a great idea because there was one time at a range that I worked at where there was an issue and a ceasefire was called. And this one guy didn't cease fire. He kept shooting. And uh, I, to be honest, I got upset with him and I found out why. Because he had earbuds in and he was listening to loud music so he didn't have to listen to the gunfire. Got news, gunfire is part of the deal. Sound and loud noise is part of the deal. You're going to have, if you're too sensitive to it, have earplugs and earmuffs 
but be sure that you can hear your surroundings. It is not, you're not encapsulated. You're not the center of the world. The world isn't revolving around you. You need to pay attention with all of your senses, including hearing to what is going on around you. Okay. Uh, ceasefire allows shooters, uh, depending on the range, to actually go down range and put the targets up. That's why a ceasefire is so important. Anyone can call a ceasefire, um, but you have to have a reason. So if you see something dangerous or something's happening with your gun, you yell out ceasefire, and everyone is supposed to stop shooting so that you can uh, fix whatever problem or seek help with whatever problem that you have. Stay behind the firing line when you're shooting. Have fun, relax. The whole attitude, I, I mean, I know I'm sounding really ominous, but the whole attitude when you go to the range, yeah, are you practicing to save your life? Yes, but if you have the mindset of, this is kind of fun, this is kind of cool, I enjoy this, no one's bugging me, I don't have to listen to, to teenagers screaming into video game systems, I don't have to listen to my neighbors yelling at their kids, but you do have to hear the gunfire, it's part of the deal. Okay, when you are done, clean up your booth. What that means is you take the squeegee or the broom or whatever it is, you push the brass ahead of the booth into the range. Later on, it is gathered uh, when the store is, when the range is closed, it's gathered by the employees and ultimately the, the brass or steel or whatever uh, material you're using is sent for recycling. Okay, so are the projectiles that land in the decelerator and they land in a bucket or Usually they land up next to the bucket and people are picking them up behind the scenes. So you want to clean up. Don't leave empty boxes of ammo. Don't leave your target hanging. Treat it like your home, okay? A lot of these range guys are, are older guys, not always, but some of the ranges I go to, they're older. You're gonna make a 75 year old sweep up after you. You're gonna have your mommy wipe your tushy too. I mean, seriously, let's be respectful, okay. Moving on, next. Um, actually, I gotta move back because I skipped the page. So, um, remember, proper previous planning prevents piss poor performance. If you wanted to say that positively, you would say proper previous planning promotes positive performance. Have fun, go to the range. You need to read the rules in each range. How many times do you go to the range and you get the, the form, the two-sided form? and it lists all the rules and all you do is scribble your name and that's it and you don't know the rules. Find out the rules. Find out if your firearm is allowed. Uh, back when I was growing up, indoor ranges typically, at least the ones I went to, were only rated for pistol. Could not shoot a rifle. That's why, you know, in my, in my youth, I only had handguns because I didn't have an a, a area to to go and shoot. Now it's a little different. Ranges have invested in backstops that are strong enough to stop rifles. People are shooting outdoors. Maybe I'm more involved in it, um, but you wanna go read the rules. Make sure you know the rules. And if someone does tap you on the shoulder and have a question for you, whether it's a range officer, whether it's a, a another shooter, use the muscles in your neck. This is what I mean. And I did this before, and I'm going to do it again. So you're shooting, someone taps you on the shoulder, put the gun down first. Do not, do not, or use your neck muscles, which is what I originally said. Turn your head. Very simple. Don't turn the whole gun and point it at the bad guy. Obviously, we use a prop whenever possible for safety reasons. All right, so um, that's my little tidbit on uh, range rules, range etiquette. Remember, I'm a firearm safety educator, so I'm not one of these guys that's gonna pound my fist down. I'm gonna teach you how to behave at the range. One of my future videos is going to review this. That's your kind of your commercial for the future. It is a relatively impractical object, but I'm gonna teach you how to use it. So, uh, hope you're having fun, I hope you're having safe. It's 80 degrees where I am. I am thrilled, first warm day of spring. So I'm going to go and I'm going to have some fun outside. Uh, until then, Marcus Melnick, FirearmMentor.com. If you have any firearms questions, please hit me up. I love having discussions. I talk to people all across the country. If you're in the Chicago area, you want to have a lesson, you want to do a holster draw, 
like we discussed, or, or you need a concealed carry certification or recertification, reach out to me via my website, firearmmentor.com. I would love to have you in a class. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.